the way I started painting graffiti was all about fun. It was, I never started with a career plan in my head. So I wouldn't say I do commission work for the money. Money matters, of course. But I found doing it several murals I'm happy with. I reckon the more I'm free, the best. But just take it as a game sometimes. I think my path is about finding a balance in my split personality. Because I really is a painter from childhood. I love painting, I love drawing, and it took me time to find a specific way to express it. I mean, when I was a hard student, contemporary art was all that mattered, really. Painters, you belong to the last century. No gallery wants paintings. So I believe graffiti, in a way, was appearing as the last option, like, hey, we like to paint, we still enjoy painting, you bloody intellectual told us paint is dead, beautiful is dead, this is the end of history and this is the end of art history as well. Graffiti is a practice, it's nihilist, destructive, selfish thing to me. Like, my style is better than yours. I'm writing my name, Old City, more than you. I'm challenging everyone in that game of graffiti. It's a game, it's fun. What the rest of the world considers about it, I'm sorry, we really don't care. Graffiti is not about what you paint, it's about the way you do it, the way you live, the way you experience it. And of course, there is some artwork as long as you are practicing some new styles, trying to design a new letter and your tag is catchy or not, or readable or not, different decisions. So yes, there is an artistic process, but it's a practice, it's just about how many trains you painted, it, it, it won't give you a ticket for a show. So I believe little by little I try to balance this. And let's say my painting is inspired by graffiti. And my graffiti is inspired by painting as well, and my art culture. But I still see it as two different planets. I think the relationship between the two of them is more technical at the end of the day. I have some visual, technical habits from inherited from graffiti that whether I want it or not, they will apply on a canvas. Doing graffiti quick at night, afraid of being cold, you learn to have, find solutions really quickly before the cops arrive. You don't ask questions, you just do it. So I believe that way of thinking has been really present in my artwork on a, on a canvas. Like Not asking myself too much questions when practicing. But then the techniques come from the graffiti, like sp being spontaneous. If I spend too much time, if it, it, it kills the spontaneity, uh, I feel it. I, I feel it in other people's artwork as well. Uh, it, it's a bit like food, you know? Like, you know, you know, when you have some friends home and you have to cook something and, uh, well, what's in the fridge? And you didn't plan ahead and you try to sort out something really delicious for people to enjoy. And that's the way you invent sometimes some dishes, really. And sometimes if you have time to prepare ahead and you really follow the recipe, it doesn't have the same taste. You know, not the same experience, is it?
I became a mod mid 80s. It was a massive mod revival in England. It arrived in Paris as well. That mod revival, for several reasons, immediately connected with them. And in a way, pretending to live in the 60s was my own personal punk attitude like, I don't like this world, I don't like modern technology. Let's pretend we live in the 60s. Like, fuck you grown-ups, we don't like what you've built. Let, let's go back to before. There, there was also something about the attitude is pretend everything's fine. You know, the, the famous motto being living clean under difficult circumstances. You live in a shithole, your job sucks, Still, your scooter is so sparkly and you have the best dress in town. You have the attitude. And to me, that always been more punk than anything. Like, ha, ah, you can't touch me. You won't change a thing. It was about the music as well. I mean, a lot of mods turned to hip hop. So let's go see people of my age with a new rhythm. KRS-One, Tricol Quest. That was really important, and in a way, that was still mod to me. Different outfit, different music, same attitude. If you talk to a lot of young graffiti writers, they know who I am. I've lived long enough to, to experience it. Like, oh, you the guy who did this. And, oh, oh, see, if I remember that truck you painted on oh, those trains. When, uh, when I connected, you, you were Pogo. That's Pogo. It's RCF writing Pogo on trains. I love that style and blah, blah, blah. And then in the art market, who are you again? Uh, RCP. Uh, no, wh what's your name? Oh, yeah, you're doing street art. Um, um, are you famous? <laughs> well, I didn't jump on the bandwagon. I didn't run fast enough. reason. Uh, um, last year I was not productive in the studio, but still is the main focus on the street. I don't do illegal things anymore at the moment. I mean, it doesn't have to be an obligation. And sometimes I stop painting in the streets for two years, think it's over, then came back for some reasons, like being a bit depressed or something okay let's go back to paint trains this at least nobody can steal from me this thing is my thing i can write whatever i want the way i want and it doesn't have to be relevant it's just a lot of energy it's pure sex really At the moment, I believe it's quite a long time, really, quite a few years. I haven't done nothing illegal because uh, I got raided several times and I'm a bit fed up with it. And to me, gra illegal graffiti is trains, trucks, buildings, well, it's a drug. Uh, at the end of the day, I discovered graffiti on side tracks, on trains which is not street art. It's not happening in the street. You have to walk by the side tracks, which is illegal and dangerous as well. And then you're painting on trains, it's even more difficult to find them because nobody knows if they're gonna run. Uh, sometimes they clean where you spray. So you, what you have is uh, flash reflections on wet paint with uh, <laughs> no distance. Like, okay, it was my best piece, but that's all I have is this shitty picture. So I believe that made it totally underground compared to uh, anything painted in the street in uh, 
trendy gallery. I'm sorry, that's so boring. I, I don't even look at it. I see the intention and it's obvious. It's now a few years back uh, um, after years of using amazing colors uh, I decided little by little to stick to primary colors as a, a, as a personal challenge really. So people telling me about oh this is Mondrian thing, I, yeah why not? Less is more. But aside, um, I read tarot, so it's more like that imagery is rooted deep inside of me. So I won't paint a tarot card. It doesn't make sense, they already exist. But most of my artwork is influenced by it. It's not visible. It's about the invisible, in fact, really. I think long ago I try, uh, I've painted constellations. I've uh, always been surprised about uh, human mankind history, like how a civilization connected those dots in that specific order. And there is different civilization don't connect the stars the same way, by the way. And there's long history. I mean. Uh, Mayas, they don't have the same constellations as Romans. They have different connections in between the same stars. And I always thought, like, it's funny, like, to create some new ones, <laughs> create new connections. Sometimes it's a bit silly because in constellations, lines never cross. And once uh, I was drawing, like, some kind of constellation with line crossing, I thought, oh, this is so wrong. Wait, no, no, that's my way to interpret it. <laughs> it's not logical. Well, who said we had to be logical? It's uh, empiric logic, different magic logic. I'm more excited than if I had to do the wall by myself. I mean, it's totally different. I can paint murals by myself, but uh, I like the challenge still painting with the guy. That, that's probably something which is specific for, uh, to people coming from graffiti. That's how you learn about people. That's how you learn about friendship and your mates and your limits and their limits as well.